five minutes. Okay, I am recording. Okay, thank you very much. Are we sitting at these chairs? Yes. Please feel free to right click on any of those and it should expand a little bit. Is this photograph from Trisha's club or a, diff a different club? This That's Duncan's. Minecraft. That's Duncan's. My club's a little bit bigger. Oh my than goodness! That. It looks like it's cold. They're all bundled up with jackets and stuff. <laughs> Might have been last winter. Yeah. Thank you, Beth, for sending out the notices and reminders there to all the groups. Welcome, Lori. How are you? And welcome, Talia. Glad you all could make it. Any seat is fine. If you all want to just right click on one of the chairs, it'll let you sit. And if it needs to expand the table, um, it can do that too. And it does that automatically, which is kind of cool. I wish my table at home would do that automatically. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be great for holidays and, and all kind of gatherings. Oh, it? yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't have to bring all those folding chairs and collapsible tables in. It'd be great. Looks like someone, there we go, yes. Another chair, maybe y'all pick the same chair at the same time. It's okay. Welcome Thunder. And welcome Lear. Good to see you guys. I'm not the only one that landed on the table. <laughs> <laughs> the table could be a dance floor, actually. I think Thunder's Ooh. just going to talk from the tabletop. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I think okay. you might. I'd like to welcome everyone to our Mobile Gaming Monday, one of our first sessions for this year. Um, the ISTE Mobile Learning Network and the Games and Simulations Network along with VISTI and the Virtual Environments Network, um, we'll be hosting these Mobile Gaming Mondays every third Monday um, of each month during the year. 
and we're always open for ideas for presentations or tours or educational um, opportunities in Second Life, and we like to integrate gaming and um, mobile tools um, as well um, for many of our presentations. My name in real life is Laura Briggs, and I am currently a kindergarten teacher. Um, I was a technology resource teacher, and I'm still involved with ISTE and the Mobile Learning Network and the Games and Simulations Network as well. And I would like to introduce our other two facilitators tonight. Um, one is Thunder and Sippo. Um, her name in real life is Kim Harrison. And Thunder, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? I think she just said that she can neither hear nor speak with the viewer. Oh. Did I miss that in the chat somewhere? Yeah, it's right. Um, she said, um, Oh, I see I can't up in the top to get there. on with Firestorm. Okay. <laughs> Maybe if, she, if you teleport out, Thunder, like go to... Um, SIG VE, and then come back, um, see if that helps your, to reset your sound. Okay. So, Thunder, if she's frozen, then she's going to probably have to restart. Um, let's jump over to um, Nimana. Um, who is really Trish Cloud, and if you can tell us a little bit about yourself, Trish. Hi, I'm Trish. I'm from Huntersville, North Carolina, which is a suburb sort of of Charlotte. I am the technology teacher at Grand Oak Elementary. I teach technology to kindergarten through fifth grade. Um, I'm in my fourth year with the Minecraft Club. In fact, I just had it today, and trust me, last week was the first week, and we had a train wreck. Um, this week was much better, and only one person cried. So, um, yeah, um, I've been doing this Minecraft thing, and um, I started with iPads, and now we're on um, using desktops and iPads, and it's a lot of fun. And I keep looking for new and different ways to worm it into the curriculum. Fantastic. Um, and that's our topic for tonight is integrating Minecraft within instruction and the curriculum. And Thunder and I, for example, we work with the same level. And Trish, do you work with elementary or older students? Uh, K through five. Ah, okay. So we all are K through five, actually. But many of the ideas that we talk about um, can be applied, you know, to older students um, in middle school and high school as well. And so, Trish, if you want to get started and we'll have Thunder pick up when she comes back, when she's not frozen, that would be great. And just okay. tell us a little bit about what you're, how you started, what you're doing, and um, what your kids are learning and how you're using it with students for Minecraft. And then also for everyone here, please feel free to type questions in chat. Um, if we can all turn off our mics at this time, um, just so we don't get any feedback, that would be great. Um, and then we'll have um, Trish talk. And then um, when Thunder gets back, we'll have her talk as well. Um, and I'll add some things to the end. And then we can also all share some of our experiences for how we're integrating Minecraft as well. Thanks, Trish. Okay, um, it was four years ago, maybe five, um, time kind of blurs together. I was at an elementary school and it was when uh, school districts were just starting to fall in love with um, iPads and we got two carts of iPads and I had an interest in getting games into the classroom um, just simply because I knew how much fun I had playing games and I knew there had to be educational value there. And I had been reading and learning about um, game space learning and so knowing that 
World of Warcraft was out of the question for K through five. I decided to go with Minecraft. I had been um, I had been playing Minecraft since it was in beta, so I've been playing Minecraft about seven years. I'm not an expert in Minecraft by any stretch of the imagination, just a dabbler. Um, so I went to my principal and said, we have these iPads, can I start a Minecraft club? And I explained it to him, and he said, if you raise the money to pay for it, um, we can do it. So I had 60 iPads and a technology lab with 30 computers. So I got a quote for how much the Minecraft EDU would cost because I had discovered Minecraft EDU and this was back when Sandari Coivisto, who is one of the founders, was taking my phone calls and typing in the orders himself. Um, I got a quote and I put a poster up on Friday that it would be $10 per student to pay for 60 licenses for um, the iPads and 30 licenses for the desktop computers. By 9 a.m. Monday, it was filled. So we started having our club and it went really well. And then we got it, we were able to put it on the computers. I put the older kids on the computers because they had more skill with using a mouse. But as the younger kids started catching on, it they would move up there. And um, this has pretty much been what's gone on until two years ago when I started at a new school. We had so many kids signing up and I didn't have the resources at this school that I had at the other one. Instead of having 60 iPads, I only had Minecraft on 15. So that limited my club size to 45. So what I end up doing is I do a fall session and a spring session of Minecraft with, um, with the, um, with the club and someone's asking if the Minecraft is on the edu is on the tablets you know I've read somewhere that um, you can connect to hosting but the Minecraft edu is only on um, the desktops how many adults do you have in there with you not enough <laughs> um, today I had two I had one woman in there who is uh, used Minecraft, she's a parent, and so she was very familiar with helping kids figure out how to move around and everything, and then I had another parent running around troubleshooting with me because last week when we went in, there had been an update and none of it worked, and I had 45 kids, and they were all screaming because nobody could get in game, and it was it was a train wreck last week. This week was much better, and the natives were soothed. So um, it is, of the, you know, it's when you're dealing with Minecraft, particularly in elementary, some of the children are quite young. And so they get really wound up about playing the game. They're very passionate about it. Their passion for this game is unlike anything I've ever seen. And when they it doesn't work for them, you have to be ready to like, soothe their ruffled feathers because they get really upset if they're not able to access the game. Um, they um, Right now, we are beta testing Minecraft EDU's hosting environment, and so they're all in world together, whereas before we were running servers off computers to where we would have five kids in the same world, but they could never be in world together because none of the computers could handle serving 30 computers. And our school district had gotten away from local servers and said so they would not let us put a server in the school. So when Minecraft DDU started doing their beta for their hosting, I jumped on that and it's really turned out to be kind of cool because all the kids can get in there together and we have to work on digital citizenship constantly when they're in world together um, and they can, um, they have to learn to follow the rules and I used 
I went to um, Joy Cada's site and I gleaned um, some of their information from their charter and used it to structure a charter for the Minecraft club that all the kids had to sign the first week which said that they would respect each other's builds, that they would not pick on people who were not building what they thought was beautiful and that kind of thing. Just aware that we were with that many kids in one environment, I wanted them working together and giving each other enough room to create whatever they're wanting to create. I also gave them suggestions on what to build and I built a blend space made up of um, nine YouTube videos of different things they could build that they could look at to get ideas to build like a maze, a pagoda, a rocket, an elevator, a highway system, etc. So I gave them a lot of choices there because we can't be in survival mode at this point which I have found honestly not to be really good for elementary age kids just simply because seven-year-olds if they lose all their inventory get really 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 upset and the Minecraft Club at school is a place to create not to destroy so I've discovered over the years that it's just better if I keep them in creative mode um, but they um, we have found the hosting to do really well and um, what it, what I did was when you spawn in world I built two booths that each have teleport pads in them and um, there's another school in middle school that is using Minecraft EDU also and when they walk across the teleport pad it teleports them to a place way away from the spawn point so that they have a separate place to build to where the kids from our school won't be messing in their builds. Um, we found that, um, and we've also, um, Minecraft EDU has been doing a lot of things with this beta of the hosting environment where you can change maps and do things that you need to do and um, I've used it with second graders in a social studies project. Um, part of the North Carolina State Standards is a study of communities at the beginning of the year. And so I have each of the second grade teachers break their classes into town councils. And one of those is the mayor, who is the voice of the town council. And in class, based upon what their teacher has taught them about communities, they have to design a community. And then over two weeks, they come down to the lab and they will build their community in Minecraft based upon their design. And this year, I plan on um, implementing fraps for the mayor to screen capture the build so that the teacher will be able to have a video reference of did they build what they were instructed to build and we're going to construct a rubric to to grade on whether or not they met the criteria of demonstrating mastery in building the community for this project. Um, we've used it with fifth grade social studies and Colonial Williamsburg. Uh, we have done a project where the students had to pick a college uh, that one of the teachers from our school attended. Um, yes, we did win a copy of Camtasia, mm -hmm, but it's not on every computer in the lab. <laughs> so um, it'd be easier for the students to use fraps. I'm planning on the Camtasia for when they start making their machinimas for the contest. So yes, I need more copies of Camtasia. <laughs> um, what they did is a, it was a school-wide fifth grade project where um, every student selected a college that one of the staff members attended. Then using their research skills, they had to research the entrance requirements, the cost, the living accommodations, where it was located, what the college was famous for, or what their focus was. Was it liberal arts? Was it science? And then we had several students who chose 
as part of the multimedia portion of their of their project they built an area of the campus in Minecraft and then took you on a tour using Machinima took you on a tour of the school and showing you what the school looked like and so that was um, the one we had we had one for West Virginia State University it was really good and we also had one for Butler University that the kids built the basketball house or place and it was just amazing and the fact the teacher at our school who went to Butler was so excited about it she was sending it to Butler because she just thought it was so cool that they had built that that well um, one of the greatest things that's been going on in my school is the fact that the teachers are now using Minecraft pretty much on their iPads that they have in their classrooms they're using the Minecraft PE for all sorts of different things like um, building lighthouses that is another North Carolina state standard is uh, histor uh, landmarks in North Carolina and lighthouses is a big one because there were so many lighthouses in North Carolina and so the kids build lighthouses or using it in math to um, explain arrays or fractions our math science facilitator helped me create a lesson on fractions using mat, um, using Minecraft and gem blocks to build a town and it's based on fractions and um, that was really cool and I, it's been a learning curve and even even this far into it I'm still learning um, you know it's like sl I'm slow but um, I'm grasping things like um, you need to really constantly remind them to keep their build small because the kids get excited and they start building things on gargantuan levels that giants would fit in um, and you have to constantly remind them to bring it down to 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 a size that is workable because if we're working on the fraction lesson the first time it was built the numbers were so huge the two kids couldn't even begin to to break the fractions down because there were so many blocks involved so it was beautiful and it was gorgeous to look at and I still have it somewhere but it it was just too huge but it's all a learning curve and I just don't think that there is any limit to what kids can do um, they can tell you stories they can um, explain scientific things um, and the past two years one of the greatest things they've done is um, I had some girls two years ago and boys this past year that created a story um, the girls used Harry Potter the boys created a story they built it and then they recorded it and took it sent it to ISTE for the Edu Machinima Fest and I've really um, fallen in love with Machinima because of the fact that it is such a fabulous tool for demonstrating mastery in Minecraft because the kid can explain it as he's walking you through it and then you have an artifact that you can create you have that can be part of their digital portfolio and we're a personalized learning school so this fits right in with the whole personalized learning um, idea that we have going on in our school um, and we have kids who want to use them for genius hours I just don't think that it's fully been tapped into but at the same time I like the fact that Minecraft is still very free-flowing it's not been boxed in and regimented to where you have to do this or you have to do that it still is a wide open creative space for kids to show you how they're learning um, so yep this is my fourth year and um, I wish I had more girls but I've got, I'm getting more girls all the time but it's still heavily populated by boys um, and yes Chromebooks is um, 
this is an issue. Um, I'm fortunate that we still have 30 desktop computers and we still have roughly 500 iPads floating around the school. But um, I've been expressing to anyone who will listen to me is that you know, something's got to give because districts are really falling in love with the Chromebooks because they're inexpensive, they're durable, etc. But you can't do Minecraft on a Chromebook. And as far as game based learning goes, there's not a lot of uh, what you would call good educational games that. Um, that you can do. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if anything does get done to get Minecraft working on Chromebooks. I, I just don't know at this time. Um, cool, get in touch with a virtual computer lab. Nice. We have some great back chat going on in the um, nearby chat window, and I think Trish really picked up on most of the questions that came by. Um, thank you, Trish, for all those fabulous ideas and ways you're integrating, and I know I was taking notes madly myself with all these cool ideas that you were mentioning for management and also integration ideas as well. Um, are there any other questions for Trish before we move on um, to Thunder? Um, I was just kind of curious, how often does this club meet? It, is it every day? Is it once a week? It's every Monday. And my weeks are divided up in between. I have Minecraft Club on every Monday, and I have Coding Club on every Friday. So um, that gives me Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to prepare for the other one. Um, how do they determine the project that they do? Um, I give them options, but I also ask them to show me what they're doing because I have had to set some parameters of um, of uh, no spawning of animals because if not I'll end up with 5,000 cows or moose rooms everywhere um, because they're kids they get excited and in creative mode there's just eggs and they just throw them on the ground and there's ocelots and mushrooms everywhere and I've I've walked into the world and had cows and they're standing on their heads and um, it's just it just gets out of control so I have I have certain things that they have to tell me um, if they want to use dynamite they have to tell me why they're using the TNT what 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 are they planning on doing that they need to use TNT other than just blowing things up for the heck of blowing things up? And I know that's fun, but at the same time, for 15 weeks, blowing things up is a bit much. So they have to kind of run the project by me, and I will go in game and run around and see what they're up to. But I have noticed today that they were being very polite with each other, and I had one kid who wanted to ride on someone's roller coaster they had built last spring, and he said, do you think it'll be okay? And I said, sure, hop on. And I keep books there, um, the little Minecraft books. I've got those there, so if anybody needs to look up how to do something with Redstone, they've got references there. I also keep Explorer Pro HD on an iPad so they can look it up that way. Um, there, I, I, there's so much going on with Minecraft EDU right now. They are expanding so quickly. It's kind of hard to keep up uh, with all the stuff they've got coming out because so many people are using it and they're sharing those resources. Um, the, the the hosted environment is 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 changing constantly, not changing in a bad way. It's it's blossoming, and it's really going to be an awesome thing when they get it up and going. We only had one little glitch today where everybody froze for about two minutes, but that is the only time that's happened. And we were putting the server through its paces because the server will only hold 30 people and I had 30 on today and they were working it hard. So that was the only glitch that I had today, but it's still, um, 
there's no limit to the ideas, but like I said, doing things like mazes or creating labyrinths or sky ships where they have to build up in the sky, you build up and then you have your ship floating in the air. Things like that, I want to, I want them to build things that are challenging to them, not just another house. I want them to really explore the limits of the things that they can build and we don't have any mods running right now so um, sometimes mods are a good thing and sometimes mods are not it just depends on what they're trying to do so thanks Okay, I think some additional questions are popping up there in the chat. Um, one recent one here is, is can the students change skins in the EDU version? Um, and unless they've changed that, um, students actually get to choose um, their avatar and their girl, boy, girl and boy avatars right in the very beginning um, when they log into it. So they don't have individual accounts. They just log into it um, right as they're sitting on the computer. Um, with a, they with a name or whatever, too. Skin. They what can't they, customize um, their skins in EDU like they do commercial. Well, they have, when you're logging into EDU, there is, um, it's like it pops down there and there's all the little avatars, like a red-headed girl, a kid with a, with a creeper shirt on. There's a whole series of generic boy-girl avatars that are down there that they can pick one of those. I have read that you can change your skins more than that, but it's not been something that I've delved into simply because for my purposes, them just picking the generic skins that are provided by Minecraft EDU are fine. And um, they pick one of those and head out through the door and they're gone. So um, They do, I have noticed they have added ComputerCraft and ComputerCraft EDU to the hosted environment. So um, using the turtles to learn coding in Minecraft is now also going on in the hosted environment. And then one of the other questions, um, Trish, was are the kids able to log on from home? Not with Minecraft EDU, no. Because we only... Minecraft EDU is unique in a good way in the fact that the licenses belong to the computer. So the license is attached to the computer. I have 600 kids in my school. I can have any of those kids, any 30 of those kids can be logged into Minecraft EDU at one time. But they can't do it from home because I don't send it home for them to to do that. What I did in that case is I started a regular server um, that I think I'm going to transfer to vanilla, but it's just a regular server that I started for kids from my school where they can play their regular Minecraft accounts from home on that server on non-school time. But the, the, the only way they can... Um, now, if it's a school situation and the thing that I've understood for Minecraft EDU is it's for school purposes, and I don't know if, I personally don't know of people who have sold the license and let their, let the kids download Minecraft EDU from home. I, I, I don't know of anybody doing that. I know you probably could. I tried to do that. I don't know of anyone doing that. Um. I tried to do that and I was told by Minecraft EDU that that's a violation of terms of service and licensing. So okay. you really only can use EDU from school. Um, Cause I was trying, I have a server and I have one EDU account and I know you right. can access the EDU server with commercial accounts. And so I was trying to run it remotely but, cause it's not approved in my district yet. And right. as I was trying to set up the hosting service with Minecraft EDU, they were asking me questions about, you know, what they needed to know to set up the, the hosting. And then it became evident that I can't run it um, without the appropriate number of um, EDU accounts. 
um, and that to hand out the jar file so that they can install the launcher for EDU at home is right. that's where it gets a little shady in terms of terms of service and licensing. Right. So I ended up going the, commercial instead. That's the thing that I, that's one of the reasons that I went ahead and got a server for the kids to use because I really didn't feel comfortable allowing them to try to access Minecraft EDU from home, but I knew that I could, if they wanted to work on a project on my server, they could do it, record it, and then bring it to school. So I'm kind of playing it with both angles to try to give them a way to access and play Minecraft in a safe environment out of school, but then having it school for school things. Because there are some things in Minecraft EDU that, you know, the local doesn't, the, the regular game doesn't have that I really like, but um, that I, I really do like, but it's still, and um, my principal, he just looks at me a lot when you, my administrator, he looks at me a lot and shakes his head and smiles and just kind of lets me do what I want. And it's, I've had a champion in our instructional technology department. She's, she, she was our specialist at our school, but now she's the director of instructional technology. And she has been phenomenal in supporting me in Minecraft EDU and getting the district to support it. And right now, our engineers will help you install it, and it's pretty much approved in our district for people to use. Right, if they um, if they have to have their own personal Minecraft account in order to use the server. So it's um, it has been um, so. We've got several schools that are using it now, and um, some of them, most only use it for clubs. I don't know how many schools are really trying to integrate it into the curriculum, but I keep pushing at that border to try to get more and more acceptance of it because I, can, I, can, I can't think of any reason not to. Um, and they have a dedicated URL. Um, yes, it's just um, when they go into the server, I have a server and I name it's the name of the server is Minecraft for Owls and they just click on that and go in. Yes, I got it through um, Cube Toast. Awesome, awesome, awesome hosting place. Thank you all for your questions. I really appreciate it. Yes, fabulous sharing and, and questions there. And if we can go ahead and jump to Thunder, um, she's going to talk about how she was able to get Minecraft EDU um, into her program and, and what she's done with that and, and previous to that as well. Hopefully we'll hear a little bit about that too. Thank you, Trish. I'm hoping Thunder's mic is working and stuff. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. You can hear me now. Phew. Okay. I'm on my husband's computer. Thank goodness. I don't know what is wrong with mine. I have so many questions from Trish, but I'll, I'll email her or something. Okay. So I've got a few slides up here behind, um, well, to my right. Um, I've wanted to have a, a Minecraft or some virtual world club at my school for years. We tried um, Quest Atlantis several years ago, and that worked great until they changed something about the way they were delivering graphics, or my school changed something, but our hardware couldn't handle it. We had a club that lasted six months, and then finally we had to give up. But Minecraft is wonderful. Um, so I put in a ticket to have, um, to, to, it's unsupported software. So I had to put in a ticket for unsupported software to be purchased and, and used. And it actually took about three months to get that ticket through. As the computer resource specialist in my school, I was able to follow the ticket. And it got to be 56 pages long before it ended up on the chief information officer's desk. 
And when he finally got a hold of it, all along the way, I was writing to the engineers or the network people, whoever I could see had the ticket. I'd check about once a week, and I'd write to those people and say, how can I help? You know, What's the problem? What's the holdup? Um, and nobody wanted to let me have it. But when it finally got to the chief information officer's desk, I emailed him, and he was my champion. He said, let's get this done. And so the only caveat, though, is that we are only allowed to use it after school. I'm hoping that this year that changes. Um, we'll see. So this is my first little club. I only have 10 licenses, so there are my 10 fifth graders. Um, a lot of people didn't hear about it until we got started, so I didn't have a lot of people to turn down. Maybe three kids who initially signed up I had to, um, you know, we, we did a random selection, and I had to tell three kids that they didn't make it. But this year, I've already had fourth and fifth graders asking me about it. So I'm hoping to buy 10 more licenses, so we have 20. I have found that the newest laptops in the school will run, run the program. So we're using Minecraft EDU. So I'm hoping to um, not be in the computer lab, but be in a classroom that's almost empty. I have a rug on the floor and a table that'll seat around eight. And I'm hoping that the 20 kids can just come in there and crash and get comfortable and enjoy Minecraft together. So when we started our club, I started with the, the Minecraft EDU tutorial. Um, I wanted a chance to let everybody um, experience the same thing, whether they were brand new and needed the tutorial for directions or whether they were experienced Minecraft users. I dumped them all into this place that they didn't know anything about and they helped each other get through it. <clears throat> there we go. Um, and this is a picture of three of the kids working on a Jamestown project. Um, I asked them after we had done maybe three lessons in the lab together to come up together with some sort of a project that they could work on collaboratively. And s eight of them wanted to build Jamestown because of a little video I'd shown them of um, a child from Hampton, I think, um, speaking about Jamestown and explaining the history that he knew of Jamestown through a Minecraft build. So they wanted to try to reproduce that. And the, and the other two kids really wanted to build an Egyptian pyramid for second graders to look at. So they broke off on their own, found their own little space in the world, and the rest of the kids um, divvied up the Jamestown ships, the fort, the Powhatan village, and started building. These are out of order. Okay, the second project I had them do was um, perimeter. I wanted them to have a project to do, a short project, that was based on curriculum, so I'd have something to show my principal to say, hey, we could do this in a class period or two with everybody in grade X, and they'd all benefit from it. So I told them that I wanted them to build their own home with a footprint interior perimeter of 48. We found a graph paper, interactive graph paper online for them to plan their, their house. And once they showed me their plan, they could go into Minecraft and build it. So here's one example. These were fifth graders, and yet that was much harder than I thought it would be. Okay, so, so what I really have to offer you most of all is if you as an adult want a place to try Minecraft, a place to play with others, we have a couple of options. First of all, <laughs> this is um, Visti's Beast Node server. There are a couple of our builds. Um, and you, Visti pays $10 a month for a Beast Node server that will hold up to 40, 30 users, excuse me. And you are all welcome to join us. All you have to do is email me at k4sons at gmail.com. Send me your Minecraft login name, and I will email you back with um, the URL for the server, and I will whitelist you, and I will op you so that you can do everything we can do. We generally play um, creative mode, and some diehards like Beth who really want to be in survival can set their own game of survival so they can be survival while the rest of us are in creative. We meet there at least one Monday a month. Um, PLN that meets on Visti Island on Monday nights at 8 o'clock. Well, 
five o'clock second life time at least one Monday a month we meet in our Minecraft server instead of meeting in, in Second Life. And it's usually the first Monday of the month. Okay, and then we have a really exciting opportunity coming up next week. If you want to try Minecraft EDU, let's see if this is the slide. I think it is. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> um, we have a license, uh, we have a, an EDU cloud-based server with 30 licenses. Five are assigned to us and, and we have teacher accounts. 25 of them are student accounts and so we're inviting the first 25 people who sign up to come Monday night, September 28th at 5 p.m. SLT, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, so if you are interested in doing that, the tiny URL, URL, URL is up there. Um, it's mcedu regs for minecraft edu registration i just need your email address your professional email address and your name and then i will email you back with what you need to do to download and install minecraft edu and give you a student um, logon and password so i think that's pretty cool Absolutely, very cool. Thank you, Thunder. Looking forward to that too, and seeing how that um, cloud server can work. Um, would you know, Thunder, how the cloud server compares to the regular Minecraft EDU server and how the remote access can work? Um, or do you all have special permission for the remote access for teachers? Um, Karen Richardson, the executive director of VISTI, had to talk quite a bit with the Minecraft EDU people to get them to let her be a beta tester. Um, and we've never, we haven't used it yet. I've logged on and w marched around and um, a few other people have, but this will be a real test to see how it works. Um, so Karen has created 25 student accounts. She's given them Harry Potter movie names and assigned them passwords. And you know, it, it, we'll just have to see. I'm going to start tomorrow night sending the information to people so that um, we can try it with a few people to see what's going to happen. But um, I don't know. It's 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 an experiment. Exactly. This is definitely a great opportunity to try it out and learn about how it works. And Nimana saying you'll love it because she's already using it too. Um, which is fabulous. Thank you, Thunder. Are there any other questions um, for Thunder um, about the way that she's used Minecraft EDU um, or else also about the, the VISTI teacher server? I'm curious about the, you know, her club in terms of starting it up. What was the biggest challenge? Was it um, the IT issues, was it the parents, obviously the kids weren't a problem because they wanted to do it, or the teachers in your school, you know, who, which is the biggest challenge that you feel you have to overcome to get this thing started? My biggest challenge by far was the IT people. Um, it took several months to get the ticket through, and then once it was approved, they insisted on installing it themselves. So I had to wait for them to come out and, and it wouldn't install. We figured out that though all the computers in my computer lab looked like they were the same, they actually were not the same and it would only run on two of the computers. So then over Christmas, and I put this ticket in in September, over Christmas my husband and I had to go in and move 16 computers. We took eight out of classrooms and put them in the lab and replaced them with ones that had been in the lab that wouldn't run Minecraft. So right now, Though I have 30 computers in the lab, only 10 will run Minecraft. They're the, almost the same model, but the video card was just a little bit better. And what was their what was the issue? Like, was were they worried about security? Were they they were you know... worried about our network security? Yes, and they were okay. worried that some savvy kid would get into Minecraft, the program, and um, tinker with it and be able to get out into the world. Well, you you actually can if you know a server name. 
you actually mm-hmm. can use regular Minecraft on edu and get out. But they come in. I'm there. We only mm-hmm. have an hour and a half. They don't have time. They want to play. They don't have time to figure out anything like that. Right. Um, the parents were wonderful. I, I had a parent meeting at the before the club started at the exact time that parents would normally be asked to pick up their children because the principal's biggest concern was, what are you going to do if it's 4.30 and someone doesn't pick up their child? So we had a parent meeting at 4.30 one day. So that we could see that they absolutely could get there. We also, um, I also asked them in the uh, in the Google Doc I used for them to sign up to give me um, a foolproof way of of reaching them via technology. So many of them gave me cell phone numbers, and that proved you know I could text them. That proved much better than you know, the, the numbers and the emergency numbers and all the kind of stuff that, that the school office has. Um, I contacted them that way to tell them they were in the club and they had to contact me back within, you know, an hour to let me know that they had accepted. So all of that work to solve all those kinds of problems. Now, in terms of the tech skills that your students had to have to do this, did they come to the club with the skills or did they learn it in the club? They, some of them had it and some of them didn't, and they learned from each other. Uh Um, The neat thing was that some of the kids, one boy in particular, who is, was very quiet in academic settings and still was quiet in the Minecraft club, um, the kids soon found out that he knew a lot and they were constantly calling him to come help them, to come show them something. And he was great. He's the, the kid in the, the tall kid in the yellow plaid jacket there Mm -hmm. he would go over and stand behind somebody who was asking him a question and keep his hands behind his back while he told them what to do I his name was Jared and I thought he was fabulous and I was constantly texting his mother and telling her what he was doing now to help somebody he he just really shined as a leader and he's not a leader in an academic setting Hmm. there's one little girl who was new to our school, and she, she, uh, we heard from her previous school that she was a cutter. And so she came, and she had all this hair, and she kind of hid behind her hair. She got into the Minecraft club, and she made friends with those kids, and she started pulling her hair back and talking to the kids. We had no problems with her, and she seemed really happy to be at our school. Mm-hmm. Now, are you finding that there's a bleeding over to the curriculum side? Like, this is a club, and they're doing, even though you're suggesting curriculum kind of topics, um, is there any bleed over towards the curriculum side, like perhaps a social studies fair project done in Minecraft or something like that? Not in my my school, not yet, but um, other people in my position at other schools have gotten involved because they've seen that it's been approved. And um, there's a fellow at another elementary school who recently got a grant to get 30 licenses to be used during the instructional day for specific projects, I think third grade. So I asked him, how in the world did you do that? Well, none of the Department of Technology people know anything about it. He's done it all through a grant program that's affiliated with our school system but, um, but not, you know, not DOT. So I, I don't know how that's going to work, but he, he may end up being the big hero getting it finally used during the instructional day. And once that happens and I model it a few times for teachers, I'm sure they'll start coming up with their own ideas. But right now they're, they're, they seem just very uninterested. I even had a day when we first got all this, the computers up where I just had an open house. Come come see what Minecraft is. Come sit down and play. And nobody came. <laughs> and why? Why aren't they coming? Are they unfamiliar or just they, too much work, don't want to do it? You know, what, what do you think? I think they think it's just play. 
I even have a friend who's a gamer who who used to play World of Warcraft. She hasn't in years, but um, I couldn't even get her to come. So I'm not really sure. Wow. Well, interesting. Well, you started something, Kim. <laughs> it's a good thing. Well, thank you so much, Thunder um, and Trish. And as you all can see, there are many different ways to um, be an advocate for using Minecraft um, with an instruction. And you just have to keep trying. Um, I know, you know, Trish and um, Kim would say the same thing. You have to just keep going and keep trying to use it. Um, one way that we used it at my previous school was that we, I was trying to get it in by just using it with iPads. And we first started out doing it as a club. Um, we actually had um, all of our iPads in use for the students, but we also had a, another sign up through our PTA after school program for a BYOD for Minecraft. So the parents had to give permission for the students to actually bring their own device. And we all would hook up to our wireless so they all could be in the same world. And um, we did that for, I think, three years. Um, and the class was always packed. Um, I limited it to 25 because I didn't want, um, you know, the wireless to crash and things like that. Um, and during the summers, we actually used Minecraft EDU at a, a STEM camp that I run. And so we purchased the licenses and we actually ran it on separate laptops um, and not on school equipment. So it was that self-contained, um, you know, server and the units were all etherneted up. So we were all, you know, just one big group. And um, we saved all of our different worlds um, from each week of the camp. And it was amazing to see how students would make different things. And then some students who continued from week to week in the camp, they would be showing and teaching others how to do things. And, oh, and then when someone, you know, got to the nether or they found the ender dragon or, you know, then they were changing our armor. And um, they did do a little bit of that turning the cows and pigs upside down and stuff like that too. Um, but we also had the TNT turned off and only, for special projects that they had run by me also. Um, we used that because the TNT would end up crashing us a lot of times um, initially. So a lot of ways that um, you know we can use Minecraft um, on mobile devices and also on computers um, for engaging students. You know, we know they love it. They, it's one of their favorite games. Um, we had talked about before, I think as well, um, how they love watching the videos for even for ideas, but also as a second screen. And I know Kay Novak um, mentioned that in several of her presentations um, that she's done previously, um, because students are, they can be doing Minecraft and be building and, and collaborating, but also looking up at another screen. So we would play different Minecraft videos at the same time um, as students were actually um, doing their building. Um, and a lot of times they were building something totally different than what was in the video too. Um, so lots of ideas coming here um, in the chat. This is fabulous. Um, the videos, Beth, we chose those. Um, I had the students choose those, but they could only be appropriate um, for school. Um, so for example, if it was a parody of a song um, that had inappropriate words in it, we weren't going to be able to play those. Um, there were definitely some tutorial videos um, that we watched um, that were appropriate as well. Um, and I let the students choose those. Um, we had different students choosing them um, each week. But lots of engaging possibilities um, and opportunities for students to be creative and um, collaborative and, and really just really engaged with um, problem-based learning, um, cooperative learning, and um, just being creative. Um, Trish mentioned about the Genius Hour. Um, that's definitely something, um, you know, really cool to work in that students can use Minecraft as one of the tools that they possibly might be using for a project of interest.
And Thunder mentioned about little kids. Um, I even had kindergartners. I teach kindergarten now, and they love Minecraft. I have to almost, you know, I got to take it off the iPads or something because they're, that's the constant go-to thing they want to go to. They don't want to do the ABCs and the handwriting app. You know, they want to do Minecraft. Um, so we're going to have to figure out some other ways to even use um, Minecraft with kindergartners. Um, but in my club, I had a student, um, this was last year even, and he was in kindergarten, but he was so advanced in Minecraft, it was unbelievable. I mean, he was the littlest kid in the whole group. And all the other, I had fifth graders and fourth graders, you know, way bigger and um, with a lot of experience too. Um, but this little kindergartner was making like pagodas and bridges. And I think he even made um, like the Golden Gate Bridge or something. I mean, it was like amazing. And he brought his own device. So he was showing us all these different um, builds that he was doing. And it's just, you know, amazing what they can come up with. Um, it really is. Absolutely, for sure, a future architect. Cindy, can I say something? Sure. I just wanted to say, I've been to a couple of your meetings on Minecraft and SL, um, to, mainly to help me understand how to do it. And I've really appreciated them. And I think these meetings are a really good way to get um, information out to other educators on how to do it. I know I attended for quite a while just trying to figure it out. And I finally ended up did launching mine, my own club. And um, it's really been a valuable experience. And I've learned that no matter how many meetings you attend and how many book clubs you go to and how many books you read and papers on Minecraft, there's really no being ready for it until you actually just do it. So um, I was going to share a link in local that's um, I've been I'm trying to just um, journal it for my district because as i've been commenting in local um, my district is not on board with uh well they're not on board with a lot of tech unfortunately so um it's going to be uh kind of uh, a rough road but i've already asked them about minecraft and they their response to me basically is there's no process for this like they know how to approve websites for use but um bringing in something like minecraft is not something they've done before but they did uh, they weren't completely discouraging, so they were like, well, well, you know, we can, there's no process, but it's not impossible, but I also know it's not going to happen overnight. So um, I was going to post my first day, um, just for, in case anyone wants to read it, um, but we meet once a week on Thursdays. I couldn't do Minecraft EDU because of everything I've been saying in local, what I said before about terms of service and licensing. So I actually rent a server, a commercial server, and my students use their commercial accounts. Um, I've learned that I probably should have started the club smaller. <laughs> There's been a really large response to it. Um, so I have uh, 20 kids in the club right now that all have their own commercial accounts. This is third through fifth grade. And um, I have an interest list that grows every day. Like right now, I think I'm up to 15 on the interest list. So um, it, it's, it's really, I can't say enough. I really, my point in this whole kind of monologue right now is thinking you, Cindy, and um, the, the the educators that have shared their experiences with Minecraft, like the those that have today. And I encourage anyone who's on, you know on the fence but just trying to think about it, just you kind of have to dive in with this sort of thing. Thank you so much, Priscilla, and and definitely we all agree with you. You definitely do have to dive in and take a risk. Um, to be out there and advocate for it and, um, and not really be the expert. The teacher doesn't have to be the expert because the students always know more to me. I mean, for example, you know, I know with things that I'm working on, the students are way more advanced um, and can always help each other as well um, and help the teacher. Um, but the engagement is the really important thing. Um, and that's what we're all here to um, help students is to engage them in their learning and have them be active and creative learners. So thank you all very much for attending tonight. And um, if there are any more questions, we're glad to stay for a couple minutes. I know um, Trish and I need to run to another meeting, um, but we are always available for you um, with any questions. And again, please um, email me if you have ideas for um, other sessions that we can have um, on mobile or gaming type apps or even other virtual environments. Um, I'll put my email here in the chat. And um, 
please feel free to to contact us and definitely if you can join us on um, Monday evenings, um, Visti meets every Monday um, at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Second Life Time, and all kinds of fun workshops and um, building activities and social activities, as well as professional development, um, because that's our main purpose. And definitely meeting in Minecraft um, on the Visti teacher server um, each month um, is really fun as well. And so I'd like to thank Trish and Thunder again. Um, for all their great information and ideas. And thank you to everyone for sharing and for attending tonight.